Hi everybody and welcome to part 2 of the album review for Public Enemies It Takes a Nation of Millions to Hold Us Back. Welcome. This is the Classic Quest Podcast. It's your boy Holden Roy over here. It's your lady friend Bonnie. And we are going to talk about the second half as in the the tracks 9 through 16 on Public Enemies. It Takes a Nation of Millions to Hold Us Back. Uh, This is the Classic Quest Podcast, the show where we do just that. Before we get into it, I wanted to let you know on May 13th, I put out a song titled Behind That Sue, whose music video was on this channel, and the links of all of which to promote it are down below in the description of this video. And if you dig what we do, and you like this deep dive stuff that we're going to get into, you can support us over on the Patreon. That would be real dope of you. So dope. On that note, we did go through the first half of the album already. Sure we did. already gave our thoughts and opinions on the whole all first eight tracks. Had a little good debate about sampling. If you want to get into a hot take point of view, mm-hmm. DJ Black Hurricane left a stellar comment on that video with relation to that. So y'all should go check that out. Let's get a little conversation going on that note. If you yep. think of anything, drop them down in the comments. We oh, give so. a snap what you think because it's a little too early to cuss for the new YouTube algorithms. Why, you may ask? Because kids don't watch past three minutes, so you can't say the bad words past three minutes. As simple Apparently as that, Apparently, that's folks. it. I don't know how that makes sense, but okay. We can talk about it in another video. On that note, I will show them what you got. Okay. What do you think of this little little uh, instrumental break that we get on this project? Um. Well, I mean, this one, like, I mean, in terms of, like, the beat feels very jazz-inspired. Um, so I like that. Um, and just sort of, like talking about that you know the same god gave all of these um great black leaders their strength and their power and um you know he's you know or they are sort of saying like you can get that wisdom too um i don't know and it just feels like a strong song and it's like again and it's like a nice little sample um and this is where well not a a sample but like a, a a sample of Terminator X's um, mad skills. So I like that. Um, Very beautiful. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think that this is, uh, I really like this beat. I think it's probably one of the best ones on here. Um, I really like it. I gave this one a 4.5 on 5. And I think it's cool that they're, you know, again, shouting out um, black leaders and, you know, maybe people to, to look up and, you know, find inspiration in and kind of, you know, kind of set a, a role, you know, a little tidbit of you know if that's if that song plays on you know but if you're not skipping like the tape i guess it was um maybe it was the cd um but probably a tape you're hearing that no matter what and so to get those names in your head over and over and over again that's like you know that's sort of like a brainwashing right but in like a powerful sort of way like it's doing something good to have these black leaders uh assumably in the ears of black people you know who may be looking for inspiration so i think it's um i think it's great all right well anyway why don't we move oh i didn't even fucking give my opinion i got real distracted there i'm so used Sorry. to maybe talking a lot wow that was embarrassing i spoke too much i guess uh well you, you did say one of the big points i wanted to make which i think is it's so effective how they can make something that you can groove to and dance to and throw mm-hmm. on at a party but meanwhile and in fact it could be like in a lot of cases an introduction to these names like Something I realized is a lot of the early 90s introduced people and ideas like Malcolm X and Martin Luther King to a more widespread like, audience. And it would be like well, the next generation, King, right? Like, like it's the people the, after, you know, like it's uh, the kids of the people who grew up seeing so like, those people. So like a lot of dudes I've seen in interviews be like, it was honestly listening to this shit and hearing these dudes drop these names that got them on a bunch of different journeys and stuff. So having that educational component is really cool but meanwhile it's just really strong right so the like it just starts with freedom is a road seldom traveled by the multitude and that's such a fascinating quote in and of itself right because it shows that it's not that hard for an individual within themselves to come to the point of finding freedom right that is a it tends to be like a personalized journey that we would go on but to get everyone there to get the whole community to be willing to do because because to be tr- truthful, freedom often requires sacrifice. You'll have to give up the comforts of security that are provided to you by the things that keep you from being free, right? So if if you're okay with 
not being free but having a comfortable life which is what a lot of people choose mm -hmm. you'll end up seeing how in a sense it's almost like independence and autonomy these are things that are not necessarily widespread and desired so just that quote just gives so much to think about i don't know and you have chuck d and flavor flavors voice is being sampled back and forth throughout the track and then ava muhammad is used as she goes the same god that gave wisdom to them etc unless all the names so marcus garvey adam clayton powell stephen biko rosa parks and their names that i'm now familiar with but i'll be honest in some cases it really took hip-hop to make me even curious yeah. like i read the autobiography of malcolm x mostly because so many rappers were inspired by dudes. I was like, how could you not go out there? And now I feel like a more cultured person with a deeper understanding and stuff because I did read that book. And it's like you you see other perspectives that maybe aren't so popularized or widespread. So like when you encounter, say, a nation of Islam mentality, it isn't, oh, it's anti what? It's not really what it is. It's like you can kind of hear what they're saying and think about the source materials and how everything got to be together. And it's just interesting to see how at the end of the day it's all pulling from the same true source i really think it is i think they all tap into it the, the same true source regardless of their specifics i mean martin luther king and malcolm x did not try to get to the same like by the same means like they did not yeah. approach it the same way no but it was the same god that gave strength to them to be within their realms to be the yeah. kinds of people they were regardless of maybe the differences the ideology between the men so all of this is just so powerful and unifying and stuff and it can be paralleled into the different lanes of hip-hop right yeah so the same god that inspired all these people from all these different places can be the same god that takes us all on our various journeys collectively moving us into that multitude i think it's real cool yep yeah and the scratching is ridiculous and the beat is ridiculous and it's just the the jazz sample is what like the you're like get some kenny g shit up in here i don't actually think it's kenny g don't get me wrong i'm not trying to say it is but that's what it made me think of i'm like hey we got but it's well, somehow maybe i don't know somehow kind of hype and i know that at that time saxophone music was was real big you know how i know because i'm born in 87 and whatever so at some point or another you look up on those Facebook memes, what's the top song in the year of your birth? Mm. Kenny G. Kenny G stole 87. So given that this is real close to 87, saxophone music is in. Why? Fuck the I know. <laughs> it's elevator music and it's slow and boring to me. But I've checked around. I know a lot of people that would fuck to Kenny G. It surprised me how many people were down to fuck to Kenny G, but believe it or not i bring this up whenever i can because i like the fact that people are just yeah i could see it i'll put on that kenny g and i'm just like saxophone i guess is uh the kind of i don't know instrument you have sex to i guess and especially when kenny g was on the kanye west album it brought kenny g back into my conversations yeah anyway i get a 4.5 it's brilliant this christmas album is pretty good too sure i never listened to it i anyway, bet you i bet you know it all i know is do, 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 do. like that that big hit that went number one whatever you'd know it okay. if it wasn't me doing it okay anyway the truth is <laughs> she watched zero channel and i'm like when i first heard this first of all the guitars and stuff is cool i'm like this is surprising and this is a cool era of sampling right mm -hmm. when do you get slayer sampled like, for real. I mean, I know it happens. And I, actually, <laughs> I'm curious of whatever uh, comments you might throw down with YouTube links to them. I do like those. I'd say I watch about half of the ones I get. It depends on how busy I am at the moment when we, you comment. Um, but, like, you don't get this enough unless, like, Travis Barker is somehow involved in the production. And something I, I think a lot about is, is why. Why is it that, like, in 88, it's okay to be sampling an anthrax, but somehow how by 2020 it's like an obscure idea you know like i mean to be fair you have ice t keeping that shit proper to this day i believe body count dropped an album this year and i neglected to review it it's <laughs> on me maybe i'll get to it maybe it just goes into the annals of i forget but i just don't get we'll get to it on classic quest you know 10 years down the line i just don't get how you can have like something so cool like slayer and james brown put together which yeah. is a sentence that's honestly preposterous, okay? <laughs> it's a preposterous <laughs> sentence if you think about the fan bases and everything about those two names. Mm -hmm. 
And then you had the Bomb Squad or whoever it was throwing yep. that shit together. This one says produced by Chuck D and Hank Shockley. So I don't really know. Whatever. They make the track. They make this beat that's insane. It's really insanely cool. It's just amazing. And you know how many more people would like heavy metal and like the unity that could come if like more people just sampled heavy metal and fucked with it? Again, maybe I'm a little bit talking out of my ass. But the number of hip hop tracks I've heard having reviewed, how many albums have we reviewed? With this Quite level of metal on it, it's so minimal that I think I might be able to say it's kind of weird that. Kid Rock? Like. He's sort of like that, yeah. you know, sometimes. Well, I mean, and let's say you don't sample it, there's a fuck ton of musicians in all our cities. If I wanted to go pay a guitarist, I can get a riff like this. I guarantee you, I'm probably like 50 bucks. Like, cheap shit. I don't know, maybe $50 is a lot to you. I don't know. That's fine. 50 Canadian dollars. It's more like 30 <laughs> American dollars. <laughs> anyway. I guess. Lyrically, it's fun. Uh, this is clearly going at reality TV show, yeah. which is so ironic because you can argue what you want about the sellout natures of any comments I made in part one. This is straight up don't watch reality TV. It's garbage. And then he's on reality TV later on. Sorry. But this isn't. Flava, Flav, because. As DJ Black Hurricane said, we may have said flavor flavor. So to be clear, flavor Maybe flav. Maybe my Canadian accent just made I'm it saying, sound I'm saying different. it wrong. That's fine. Because I was uh, reading on some points. Excuse? I don't it know. says flavor on Genius. Flavor Flav. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is... Flavor You're flav? blind, baby. You're blind from the facts of who you are because you're watching the garbage. Fair. But then later on, Flavor Flav proceeded to create that garbage because the bag is big enough. To which it's hypocrisy in in my little opinion and the truth is i love hypocrisy. watching hypocrisy? Is that what you interview were yeah like okay. there's interviews of like professor griff and them and they're like what are you supposed to do when you're trying to be this crew and you're all disciplined and then this guy's doing all this stuff and you can see how like there's a part of them all that has this deep resentment for the tomfoolery that this man gets up to in his life Mm -hmm. You can say Tom Fullery. I mean, this album does have Night of the Living Bass Heads on it. And then a couple years later, yeah. a certain substance does fall out of his pocket on uh, Yo! MTV Raps. And so, like, this kind of stuff is, is nifty to, like, look at the fact that at the end of the day, like, they chose to keep Flavor Flav in the group and work with him in light of his issues, which to me is actually, like, super humble and nifty, right? Like... I don't know how else to put it. It's Christian-like. Like, to take somebody in their depths and of, of whatever they might be going through and to not abandon them. Like, that's some shit you don't see. And I really respect that. And I wonder how many people were influenced by the loyalty to Flava Flav that, you know, like, you know what I'm trying to say? I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, so this is fine. The women makes the men all pause. And if you got a woman, she might make you forget yours. There's a five-letter word to describe her character, but her brain's being washed by an actor. And every real man that tries to approach to come, the closer he goes, he gets dissed like a roach. I have noticed that men who sound like that tend to also maybe not always treat women as good as they think they do. Just going to throw it out there. I have a, a firm belief that that... Because here's the thing. I know dudes... I'm not going to say names, but I know dudes right now on my Facebook, I can think of five or six, who, who speak just like Chuck D. And then I've seen how they treat their girls. I'm like, brah, that's why you get dislike like a roach. And the problem that Chuck D is facing is that while he may be a good man, the other eight guys mm -hmm. that sound exactly like Chuck D are not good men. And you're blaming women for reality television, and that's a fair, fair point. But in 2020, let's also blame the fact that men just don't treat women good. Like, we still beat them and shit. Like, we're not exactly treating women proper in 2020. Not all of us. I hit women. I'm, I used to be a little bit of a cusser. But we all know people do it, even if we don't necessarily know specifics. So, well, women got a point, guys, if they want to diss us like roaches. Anyway, I don't think she can handle Channel Channel Cold looking for the hero. She watched Channel Zero. Fair enough. She watched, she watched, she watched. I love the hook. I love the sound of it. I even love the message, right? Because the truth is, I'm going to let her talk. But she watches some bullshit, in my opinion. I watch this reality television crap show, Cake Boss, where the three people... What the fuck have I watched Cake Boss? Oh, not Boss. Cake Boss. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. Or... Nailed it is just stupid fun. So Nailed It has three uh, judge people bullying the fuck out of regular people. Just non-stop. That's what I see when I watch Nailed It. 
It's just they're mean. Just people trying they're, to cook and, and they're mean trying to, them. to bake something. And no, then everyone else sits them. at home. Every, it's a good. On a, and it's, on like and their, they're willing. They're willing volunteers for the show. They're clowns to beat their five seconds of flame. I get it. Just like a lot of people. But when I watch that's that, fine. When I watch that media, what I see is normalization of really negative behaviors of entitlement of smuggery right where you as a person feel superior yeah, but some, no sometimes someone. like you know sometimes like they like the people who make okay, it fine. they're like oh nailed i actually feel really proud might, about it and okay, like nailed it, it looks like crap. nailed it might be fine because it's not the worst version of it it's just whenever i watch it it just feels like these judges are just laughing at people for an hour that's all they're laughing they do. with people at. they're not laughing with they're laughing at or like i don't know i watch a Anyway, the the the, other, the fucking reality dating shows on Netflix or the like I don't watch them, but I watch the trailer to the hot people one. I did watch one. Love is Blind and I will watch the next season. <laughs> anyway, like it's so, garbage. It's so garbage. here's what's really nuts to me. Like I agree with this with is, the, like this. Stuff. I see hip hop really pushing this. I mean, Love and Hip Hop. I mean that that's a big one, right? I don't watch the show cuz to me it's Channel Zero garbage. I don't care about any of the crap that I've ever seen eclipse from love and hip hop. It just looks like a place rappers go to make money after their careers aren't as hot. Or in Joe Budden's case, kind of launched them in a new direction. But like, I just don't get it. I don't get reality television. I don't get why we all accepted this to this. Like, when did the learning channel? And it's cheap to go- make. It really is. So the History Network produced a bunch of garbage 2012 end of the world content because it was cheap to make and it got a lot of clicks and views. And then they scrubbed the internet in 2013 when it was no longer relevant and it's super hard to find now. Anyway, Flava Flav's cool. He kind of shouts it off. Cut this garbage off. Flava of Love's a trash show. If you watch Flava of Love, you're going to get real bad values. Flava of Love isn't real proper. Anyway, I'm going to take all your soaps and I'm going to hang them on. Actually, soaps are better than Flava of Love. But that's what he's talking about. There were no reality TV shows at this time. Ding dong. It was 1988. These are all about soap operas. Okay. Actors, they're saying. I apologize. I've been waiting for this moment. I'm just been like, okay. Sure, I think it sure, applies sure. to reality television too. Okay, but then they're psychic because they didn't exist. Well, here's what I'm seeing, right? It's all garbage content that you're consuming, right? So, yes, soap operas are a form of garbage content. And yeah, yes, they promote it's a bunch of negative shits. Actors portraying gossip. And then they just do things that are worth gossiping about. And that's all it is. Like reality television. Yeah, but that's not what they're talking about. Well, what you're I'm, insinuating. Yeah, fine. I stand by all my insinuations. <laughs> I still watch the shit you're watching, and I'm like, this is Channel Zero. Okay? That well, was I'm my... sorry I can't watch, like, Literally. I don't know, Romans killing people all day. It's historical dramas. <laughs> there is teaching you context Sometimes about life. you just life. need that lightness, I, okay? I don't. I don't. Maybe you don't. Sometimes I do. I, I need like that nonsense. I like substance all the time. Most of the time. I like some real bullshit music sometimes. Look, fine. Soap operas, reality television. I did make a blunder. Bonnie is right. Okay? Real right. Heard it here, folks. But at the end of the day... I think it applies to reality television was why I went on that rant because that's what I wanted to go with. And soap operas, I mean, who the fuck watches soap operas now? No, they're watching reality television. They're watching beauty YouTubers. I would say beauty YouTubers have in fact replaced even reality television. Listen, I am so caught up in YouTube drama. So you can call me a hypocrite. If they put Coronation Street on like YouTube or something. I spent so much time watching H3H3 and Keemstar go back and forth Uh, in their drama that I'm honestly a hypocrite. I do like my garbage, okay? (laughs) I'm admitting that I have my Channel Zero moments, but I tried not to. And to be fair, I did watch that because one day motherfuckers may come at me and know the enemy motherfucker. So there is a little bit of research. I can speak how I want on my damn podcast. Yes, you can. Anyway, so it goes on from there and I just feel like it's hilarious, right? Because they're really targeting women. To be fair, have y'all watched men watch sports during the same time? It is exactly the same garbage. And that's what he wants to do. He wants, in this song, he wants to watch a sports game. If it is. Yes! Did you- <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> ah! You got right everything on. wrong. <laughs> no, I said, no, I was actually just attacking men in that moment. Okay. It had nothing to do with this song. 
Okay, I was on a rant about how okay. men in general are <laughs> hypocrites if they think that what they're consuming is any less Channel Zero, in my opinion. Yeah. Because, yo, y'all watching the that's fights fair. and stuff? I don't get it. I watch boxing well, and I'm like... A, that's like, you know, like the, this is the stupid typical shit. man, like caveman behavior. Do you know what? I love wrestling because it's a performance art. These are just trained actors who are acting for me. And I like the fact that it's fake and scripted. I love that. It makes it interesting to me. The fact that fighting like, is real, that, that like, UFC is ridiculous. real, it's like, that's yeah. garbage. And the Super Bowl, I mean, that's not a line that's aged I mean, I well. like the movie The Wrestler, but that's about it. I don't know. I mean, to be fair, I watched a genius annotation and him holding up a Tyson fight might be a good thing because at the time Tyson is young, black and popping. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to say that sports to me is channel zero for men. And y'all don't have to like my opinion, but I also don't watch sports because they find it boring as fuck. And I watch how I watch the impact sports has on my male friends. And I, I see. Don't watch sports I also, if it's there, but I mean, it's I don't know what's going on. Half and the then time. I, and I'm not talking about dudes who play sports. I'm talking about people who watch sports, like in the same way that women watch soaps. And I mean, you can argue all the things you want to argue about how fun it is. To, and if you play, we're not talking about playing. And there's nothing even wrong with watching sports. Mm -hmm. I get that. I mean, half of y'all probably like some sport or another. Yeah, it's and like a real you know, mad at analyzing me. But straight or up. I don't get it. To me, when I watch the impact sports has on men, and then in Montreal, because we have women hockey fans as much as men, the one it has on people, it's not just men. Well, I do it's enjoy the playoffs. If we make it to the playoffs, tomfoolery. it's a lot of fun. I the watch whole city is hyped up. Load money into this machine that gives zero fucks about them. And I'm like, damn, the whole city got pimped again. And every single time. So if anything, sports is worse. Because it really fucks up with people's priorities and shit. I bet people die over sports teams rivalries. Oh, yeah, probably. I bet people also die over soap opera beefs, just in a much smaller frequency. Mm. Anyway, uh, I like the track. I know that we didn't go that deep into the lyrics on this one, but it's not like there's that much more. He yeah. just kind of drills it in again and again and again and again. Yeah. While literally promoting Channel Zero, maybe. But I also, okay, to be fair, why don't you just back up from the TV, read a book or something? Respect, right? Yeah. Because that's true to everybody in here. And now I might be one of the only dudes I know that can rightfully say I read every single day of my fucking life these days, minus maybe a day here or there. But we are on May 26th, and I've cleared 28 books this year already. I can say I read books and do all this stuff. All y'all can read more books in your life, and I challenge you to read at least a book every two weeks. Why? Because then you'll understand why I think sports is Channel well, Zero. Well, maybe not start with every two weeks. Not everybody, is, you know, has the time or has, you know, has a family and shit like that. So let's say, you know, like a book club once every month. Y'all can do that. But if you really want to. But then to, they can step up. You know, they can find the time. Fall into like, it I'm, I'm, not, I'm just like this, man. You can take away. shits. Read the book. 15 minutes a day processes over a million words a year. That's true. And so Keep a book I, in your bathroom. I'm sorry, but like if you choose to, less Netflix, more reading time. What do we do before bed now? Right. I make us turn off the damn TV and read for like a half hour. Kids are asleep and shit. Everybody has the choice and we the opportunity to. No, we don't. I have no idea what it's like to do this for kids. So all you parents have every right to tell me to shut the fuck up. <laughs> all you non-parents, y'all can't say shit. But the parents... Unless okay. they're like nurses or something no. on the front line right now. Well, yeah, but that's exceptionally weird circumstances in terms of the average. And I, you guys are awesome frontline nurses, for real. Uh, two of my family members are nurses in Nashville. So, like, it's real cool to, like, real respect and shit. They're, like, heroes in my eyes. Mm -hmm. Like, way more than me. What the fuck am I, a guy talking in a microphone and shit? Anyway, I love this track, though. I know we did in this whole distraction, but, like, I love it. It's, it's so fucking fun. The beat's amazing. The content is great for 1987. And, yes, I know this is 2020. And we're looking back at this all this time later with a lot of progressive nuance, okay? Mm -hmm. I get it. This song is a five on five. It is one of the best tracks on this album. It is banging. I just, mm. it's amazing. I just wanted to call sports heads as bad as soap opera heads, as bad as reality TV heads and YouTube drama commentary makeup gurus are just as bad. Listen, I was such a YouTube commentary guy for a while. It is a garbagely toxic Channel Zero life world where they just make fun of each other and criticize each other's contents for years. 
Oh. All of the annoying people, I've slowly like unfollowed, the problem unsubscribed, with such a YouTuber. blah, blah, blah. This type of YouTuber's content is problematic. The algorithm is killing my channel because I didn't wah, wah, look up the wah. laws beforehand. Anyway, copyright law. <laughs> Nobody looked up copyright law before they became publishers of content. We did. Most people didn't. Night of the Living Bassheads is the next track. I know you said that I was going to talk. Did I not let you talk? Wow, Song I fucked two. this shit up. Yeah. Yeah. Go uh -huh. on. Go uh huh. On. Anyways, I mean, I don't have so much to say, but I will say something. Uh, so this is obviously about the issues of, you know, watching soap operas and the expectations uh, that come from watching that in real life. Like if you watch these every day and you expect all these whimsical romance and i mean if it was the 80s i can only imagine what like the, the what the soap operas were like uh, and how gigantic the hair was but i mean which i really i don't mind that much i like i like some big hair but um i think that was a lot like i'm thinking dallas here but i'm sure that there was other ones that weren't so whatever but anyways like gone with the, not Gone with the Wind, Young and the Restless, I don't know, there's all those ones. But anyways, soap operas, they are kind of garbage, but like I get it. Um, I grew up, I guess, you know, I don't know if you kind of heard it, but uh, yeah, I grew up in a household that um, since day one, for as long as I've lived, uh, has been watching Coronation Street. So um, yeah, longest running soap opera, uh, fun fact for you. So keep that in your, keep that little nugget in your back pocket for when you have like a trivia night. So, um, yeah, but, uh, anyways, so, I mean, sometimes they're fine, but sometimes they are ridiculous. Um, and anyways, he just wants to, like, watch the sports games, and he's just kind of saying, like, guys can't live up to these, like, ridiculous expectations. So you're fooling yourself, and you're going to end up, you know, alone, basically. <laughs> um, and... Uh, I don't know. It's just interesting. And like, you know, he just wants, like I said, to watch what he wants to watch instead, which is also, again, kind of like a stupid time waste. I don't mean to say that like the people who do the sports, but I think. Nah, hmm. So here's the thing. Like, that is the thing. It's like I like, you know, you want to be a supporter. Sports, of, and I love the idea of it. And it draws people in and it always the has value and influence it has on our culture. We're so look. But it always has. Like, I mean, if you think of, like, the Romans and, like, the... Uh, but why you know, was it? The amphitheater so let's and, like, think all about the Romans. stuff that was going on Why there. did that happen? To distract the people to from do. government corruption. It was a deliberate attempt to deal with the fact that the people were unhappy. So they well, gave them and, bread know, and circuses. America, America's, like, you know, favorite sports or pastime is baseball. And, like, so it is, like, a... Again, a traditional sort I, of thing and watching I, it and playing not, it and all look, that. I'm not, I understand that, like, my statement. I'm pretty anti-organized sports, honestly. I, I just think it's manifested into a giant financial waste, a giant ecosystem of terrible. The NCAA exploits people to modern, like, it's borderline well, I mean, slavery I think, I in some that, situations. I think organized sports. Well, slavery is a strong term, but the exploiting, very much exploitive of I people. I think if you put them into organized sports that are you know competitive and things like that that can be the case but if it's just like a summer game and you're having fun and it's you know you're playing Again, a game of soccer issue, then that's okay my issue wasn't playing sports or the existence of sports or the community gatherings of sports mm -hmm. is watching sports on tv it's the addictive nature and the cult-like following of yeah, sports like consuming on television. Yeah, I guess if you're like talking about like TSN and like you know like the have you watched the commentators? And, like, have you watched the, the cults? It's like you watch the game and then you watch all what of like the details of everything. What value does Don everything? Cherry like, bring to the world? Well, nothing. I guess he's fired now. Yeah, but it took how long? <laughs> he just said racist shit for years, but sports tradition. Like fuck out of here. This shit's channel zero to me. That's all I'm trying to say. Yeah. And it's not sports. It's the culture of sports media, the way it's sold, marketed, and promoted, and the drug-like influence it has on the intelligence and the financial spending of young people who can't afford the shit they put up with. Like, it's just... Everything about it looks stupid to me. Yeah, I guess. Like, how the fuck does... To the point where Lizzo can twerk at a basketball game and that's all good. Well, it's all a shit show. Nobody cares about fucking anything. It's just a shit show for media. That got headlines. It's okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, that's what it is. And I don't know. Uh, and then he just kind of talks about the fact, that, like, you know, kind of like I already mentioned that, you know, 
she will turn down all these guys because she's waiting for like this like soap opera type lover that she can be with this you know you know fabio wind blowing you know puffy shirt nonsense um so like that's kind of what it is uh, and also, you know, talks about the fact that she's ignoring her children to watch the, these shows and, you know, maybe pay a little bit more attention to your family and those around you and, you know, the real life that's happening and don't get sucked into this nonsense life that's happening on TV. Like if you're not aware of what's going on around you. So he's just kind of pointing out that that's garbage and that you should shouldn't clutter up your mind with that. How many guys do you know ignore their families for sports? Because I personally know quite a few. Oh, yeah, for sure. Just do you see what I'm saying, though? I'm really drilling this in because I know we have a mostly male audience who probably agrees heavily with notions of this song, but maybe doesn't well, I mean, agree I'm with sure my side that, point. I'm sure that there are other things that, you know, do the same sort of thing. But, yeah. Anyways, it's a good song. Um, it is pretty cool that uh, it's kind of got a more of a heavy metal kind of feel to it. Um, and it's a cool sound. And I thought it was a kind of a random topic, you know, pointing out this but like i know that we have heard um other rappers sing about the issue of uh soap operas so i need to look into how intense you know soap, soap operas were in like the 80s that they were all getting sucked into them or what well, was like, going on even from the beginning the reason they exist is to sell products they're indefinitely ongoing shows with the sole purpose of selling products through commercials they don't end they don't teach values they have no point yeah they just exist in repetition, doing the same thing over and over again with the sole goal of selling you products and giving you bad ideologies. Yep, it's like uh, the Truman Show. And I like sports. So um, yeah, anyways, he just wants uh, people or, you know, to, to step away from that and to learn about themselves, about your own culture, about your own people, and um, do something better with your mind. So let's move on to Night of the Living Basses. Yeah, just remember, oh. half your sports people love China 4. and all 4. that 5, crap, I too. Think. Yeah, yeah 4.4. 4. 4. 4. Yeah. Because keep in mind, man, the NBA will choose China's money over your rights every day of the week. Let's talk about Night of the Living Basses. Let. Flava Flav was not sober filming this music video, <laughs> and that created a certain level of... Irony. It's, it's just so... It's like one of life's great ironies is Flava Flav's existence in Public Enemy. And I'm not being a hater. I like what the man does, brings to the table, all that stuff. But like when you sit there and really think about how ludicrous it is that on maybe one of their biggest anti-substance a- anthems, that particular substance is uh, being used on the music video against that so like, you know what i'm saying like it's hmm. and i don't say this to like be all weird about it or like to judge flavor flav like that's not what i'm doing i think it's more again the solidarity of public enemy and the way they almost stood by him is really admirable to me anyway what do you think about this song so we don't have a repeat of the <laughs> um well this beat is hype um and it definitely kind of has like that classic sound it's like one of those sounds that you hear and you just think like 80s hip-hop it just kind of feels like that and i think that that's really awesome um they're just sort of you know going through and just kind of talking about the you know they're saying that like black people have forgotten so much of who they are and you know what they've come from you know what they've come from and you know it's just sort of driving them crazy and they're just getting upset about that and so that's kind of their issue and um you know the issue of you know black guys getting treated differently and they're talking about um in the in like the prison system and in the judicial system um and you know shame on those guys that are selling drugs and that are doing all the bad things and are you know whatever and giving you know all black men a bad reputation um you know for you know the negative few people that are doing the you know the crime so they're unfortunately um uh, perpe- perpetuating the stereotypes um and honestly this is like pretty sick and um i give this a 4.75 this is like an example of like classic hip hop at its finest um so i think it's really good i don't like the beat at all <laughs> like I think it's real well made. But like imagine put yourself in like nineteen eighty eight. Like this would be like so hype. Like this is a summer song. You can dance to it, you can put it on, you get a little kick in your step. I don't so know. I listen to the beat. Like, this is like, like you know, boom box listening. Like, that sound, I don't like it. 
We both can't do it. I just <laughs> I just don't know that I'm a big fan of the beat in terms of its sonicness. Does it take away from its composition or how well made it is? No, but art's a little subjective in your taste, and I don't like this beat that much. I recognize it's well made. I just I'm fine with it. Okay. Um, I love the message and the way it comes through. Like I like when I like his flow. Like here it is, bam, and you say, "God damn, this is a coke jam." Like, yeah, it's cool. The way he cuts his cadence up, the way he fucking rolls with it, the emphasis on his voice is fucking fly. It's just real dope. And then I mean, just that double entendre. This is a dope jam, right? That's actually real cool because it's a dope jam as in the shit fly as fuck, and it's a dope jam because it's literally a jam about dope. And then let's yep. define the term called dope. You may think it funky now. No, because there is the funky term. And that is also what this track is. It's funky. Um, but that's not what we're talking about. Here's a true tale of one, one that deals with the ones that fail. Yeah, you move it if you want to move. What it to prove is here like the groove. The problem is this. We got to fix it. Check out the justice and how to run it. So effectively, it's like you got the right. You you can choose to move the product if you want. This mm -hmm. is now in our system. It's in our ecosystem, etc. Five O shows up. They're kind of looking for us. They're throwing us around, and then at the same time, look at the impact of it. And people are trying to just you know sell everything they own, rob people, you know, and then walk around comatose, you know. But it's just he wants to make sure that you're not confusing the word dope with the sound because dope is real bad. And then there's some scratching, and then he's talking about bass, because bass heads and shit. So he wants you to make sure that you're not that. And then I think that bass, is that not the same bass from earlier on when he's like, bass, how low can you go? Uh, maybe. I was pretty sure it was the same bass that got sampled, but I might be wrong. I don't really know. It samples a lot of tracks. Like, there's like 19 over here on Genius, it says, so I didn't actually look. Yeah. Um, but then it kicks in, and then the second verse comes through. And I love the composition of it all. Like, the actual complexity of it's really interesting. The science of the beat impresses me more than my enjoyment of listening to it. So I put this together to rock the bells of those that boost the closer lack uh, lack and those that sell the black shame on a brother when he dealing the same block where my 98 be wheeling and everybody know another kilo from a corner from a brother to keep another below and it kind of goes on from there and it's basically like this is some really bad shit this is actually happening i'm kind of disappointed that folk would be so willing to harm members of our uh, of the community where I'm at, the same community we've been trying to build up, and it's real bad. And then they bring it in with the bass, and they go through. And there's a whole music video. And I know I'm supposed to remember it. Like, it was real production with, like, the news anchor lady and everything. And I remember watching it. And now I don't remember anything in it. Like, nothing. <laughs> and so that leaves me to think that the music video did not have a huge impact on my life. And okay. I didn't really feel like rewatching it again before the review to do my due diligence. Because I just, you know, it just didn't happen. Um, then he got the next verse from Chuck as he comes through. And I get, I love the scratching, the how, 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 how low can you go? Mm -hmm. See, he's saying it there. Of yeah. course, you know, it is, it's that bass. So I like how he's freaking doing it because it's kind of reinterpreting the idea. Like, how fucking low can you make your life? And just the scratching and the way it flows is real nice. Um, and then listen, I see it on their faces. First come, first serve basses. Standing in line, checking on time. Home, homeboys playing the curb, the same ones that used to do herb. So it's almost like this evolution. People used to smoke weed and now they smoke crack. Um, science shows that that's not how it works. It might actually be the alcohol people are consuming that leads them far more into the, to the substance of the, the coca leaf that it gets derived from. Hmm. I'm real fascinated by that. But guess what? People don't go from weed to other drugs very often. In fact, the science shows wow. weed... It's kind of where people arrive, fall in love, and don't leave. And then they stop drinking, and then they give up tobacco, and they just cling to weed till the day they die. That's the real life story for the, the masses that consume the product. Maybe they still drink. That depends on your <laughs> age, I bet. But I just find it interesting almost how, like, there seems to be this connection that got propagated between weed and crack that really isn't substantiated when you look at the evidence of uh, drug use habits. Um, anyway, it's fine. I really enjoyed the track in terms of like is what it is. I also like when Professor Griff comes through and says, Succotash is a method for kids to make cash. It just sounds great the way he rhymes that. Selling drugs to a brother man instead of the other man. Where it's almost like, on top of that, how are you going to go and sell it to us? Like, is it got, at least if you're going to go do it, go sell it to them honkies. 
just go do yep. that like at least go harm another community anyway oh it looks like the camera fell <sighs> good camera stand is like another 70 dollars just throwing it out there patreon link down below uh, okay that just literally happened a real life camera <laughs> falling situation <laughs> um anyway i like i like this track like i said in terms of like the concept i think as far as anti-drug propaganda tracks go it's solid like really solid really powerful less judgy in like the judging the addict kind of way and more judging on the pusher right which i'm okay with like it's fair to say to the drug dealer you profit on the death and destruction of the world like that's a fair criticism whereas a lot of these people kind of judge the user and shame them like they're fucking morons which you can say that they are and i'd argue you don't know fuck all about a lot if you're just going to judge an addict and call them you know what they are it's like you don't get it yeah so i kind of like the approach taken in this track too so i have it a 4.25 on five cool anyway next up is black steel in the hour of chaos this is six minutes of brilliance here oh my gosh like what's really cool about this shit is just um icp uh, started their fucking letter to the FBI with that shit. You know, I got a letter from the government. You know, I just yeah. they, they like it's such a I feel like it's such a powerful spread forever type shit. And I know in part one I said that there was a track where Scarface commented on lyrics and it was those lyrics. And Scarface says, everyone now just monotones. Scarface is wrong. Not everyone is monotone. They sound the same on every record. Uh, they sound the same as they did on the last record. You're not working with what you're not using your other instrument, which is your voice. You should be able to use your voice as an instrument. That's very true. Chuck D was using his voice. Kendrick's playing the fuck out of his instrument too. So dope. While I don't think Scarface listens to the wide realm of music, I do think he has a real good point. That what makes Chuck D like super duper special is is the way he uses his voice it really does feel like an extension of the music yeah um what do you think about this track um i really like this one um so you know like you said the government wants them and um wants them on their side but like they're not having it they don't want anything to do with the government um and really like the beat is just like super hype it's mixed with um an isaac hayes song so that was chef um from south park um so for me like i'm assuming the black steel has something to do with jail or um by being black and having an attitude of steel like strong and unbreakable um so i think it's it may be both um that was kind of my interpolation um and that's kind of why they get put in jail because they're too powerful um and you know they frighten white people or they frighten the government or they frighten the man or whatever it is um and uh like this one kind of sounds more like a warning of a song like even just like the the beat like that it's almost like a siren not like sireny but like like a like a like a warning sound like it kind of has that kind of feel to it and it feels very like strong and powerful um which i think is really cool um and like just kind of talking about like you know that they like uh, i can't remember who it is that someone says it and um, that they have to they have to escape prison um because they're innocent and like you know they're a rebel and um you know and basically a song about um a prison break as well so I think that they're just sort of, you know, saying, like, come and try and get them. Like, nothing can stop them. Like, and, like, we're not joining forces with, like, the government or anybody that's, like, in charge of anything. Because that's not what they believe is going to push them and the black community further along. So, um, I really like this one. They, and I find, like, the beat, like, super, like, hypnotizing. I think it's really great. So, I gave this one a 4.6 on 5. I feel like it's such an interesting track, right? So mm. when I when I got a letter from the government the other day, I opened it and read it. They said they were suckers. That's an interesting point because I feel like what's actually happening might be that he's getting like a, a draft letter, right? So, I mean, Scarface's annotation kind of overshadows everything. But right. when when you think about it, right? Because what happens, this whole first verse about like, fuck the army, why am I going to go do this? And then what happened if you didn't show up, you would go to jail. But was there in like the 80s? Well, if I believe... Like what, just like the... 
According to same old Sean quoting Chuck D in an interview with Brian Coleman, back when I was seven years old, I saw my uncle come to my grandmother's house to get his draft papers for Vietnam. Oh, Vietnam was the 60s. He 70? witnessed that 60s. when he was growing up. Uh, okay. As in Chuck. So when he right, was young right, in the right, 70s, right. when Vietnam was happening and maybe his whoever got drafted or whatever. Mm-hmm. So this isn't like, there hasn't been a draft since Vietnam. Okay. But technically the U.S. government can draft people still to this day. Yeah. I don't think they can draft women though. I don't think they ever no, updated I th- that. No, I think that we fought for so much for equality that yes, they can be drafted now. Awesome. So go women. Um, Anyway, it starts off with his intro, uh, Flav's doing his thing, you know, yo, Chuck, kick it to the man, a ballad behind bars, you can say real rock from the rock, an unusual musical happening in a most unusual place, the state prison, get in that cell. And what's real interesting is that's kind of what's happening there, it's a real cinematic experience. This music video, I remember, with them fucking in the jail cells and the symbolism and the power of it, I thought it was real strong. I really enjoyed that music video, I thought it was well made and like super interesting. I'm pretty sure it's not the full song though, I'm pretty sure it's from the era where you didn't make six minute music videos because that added hundreds of thousands of dollars and shit. Mm-hmm. Maybe not that much, I don't really know, but it looked pretty high production, so in terms of like money. So yeah, they wanted me for their army or whatever. Picture me giving a damn. I said, never. Here is a land that never gave a damn. <sighs> That's awesome, man. He's like, why should I care? You never care about us, about a brother like me and myself, because they never did. Mm-hmm. I wasn't with it, but just that very minute occurred to me. The suckers had authority. And then, you know, cold sweating. I said, dwell in my cell. How long has it been? So effectively, he says, no, fuck that shit, and gets locked up and put in there. And then he's there, and he's locked up in jail and basically he's contemplating a plan he's not a fugitive but a brother like me begun to be another one public enemy serving time they drew the line to y'all to criticize me some crime and i feel like a little bit there that he's breaking the fourth wall to comments on the criticisms and shit he's getting nevertheless they could not understand that i'm a black man and i could never be a veteran on the strength and i like the way he rhymes that on yeah. the strength of the situations in real i got a raw deal so i'm looking for the steal and then that's true too, man. So even like just the other end, imagine you're a poor black veteran in the hood in the 80s and you're seeing these people and seeing how the system has absolutely neglected them. I mean, we treat our veterans like shit. So I can only imagine veterans in the hood are treated more like shit. That's just my thoughts without really knowing and just guessing. Um, but it's, it's, it's just, you know, I never think about the idea of like, the fact that if a war happened in theory in the states at least you can get drafted and go to jail and shit I... we don't have a draft canada to my knowledge doesn't have a draft but i i mean that's how i understand it but just to even think that that was a thing in history it's still an, especially I feel like i knew all of this too and like point. to fight in a war that you didn't believe in or like anyway they got me rotten in the time that I'm serving. And I, you know, the beat too, it just has such an intensity, such a head banging. Like this beat makes me feel like Rage Against the Machine revolution vibes, right? It's real strong. I don't know how else to really describe it, but this is one of those banging fucking like, ah, he's on fighting, but not like in a rowdy way, but in a for your rights kind of way. I really dig this shit. It right. makes me feel empowered. Anyway, describing how they're all locked in the cells and you have to realize uh, that what it is a form of slavery organized under a swarm of devils straight up word him on the level and the 13th amendment really validates what he's saying which effectively makes mo- a lot of privatized prisons actual slave camps for the u.s situation like technically it's not illegal according to the 13th amendment to not pay people for work if they're in jail thus slavery Ta-da. in the modern era and it's a real thing that still happens and that's why there's disproportionate arrests a lot of other stuff that goes down anyway so i got good still but i some i can trust you some do a bit from one to ten but i never did and plus i never been i'm on a tier where no tears shall ever fall cell blocked and lock i never clock y- it, y'all because time and time again uh time they got me serving to those and to them i'm not a citizen but ever when I catch a CO sleeping on the job, my plan is on go ahead. So he's kind of locked up. I feel like he's taking pride in doing things right and not selling himself short and sticking true to his principles. And while he is locked up, 
basically he's planned out his little escape he's waiting for a correctional officer to be sleeping then he caught a co sleeping uh, on death row he grabbed his gun and he did what he said so so all of a sudden now he's reversed the situation and every man's demand got served along with the time they served decency was deserved to understand my demands and give a warning i wanted the government y'all and plus the warning to know that i was innocent because i'm militant posing a threat you bet it's fucking up the government so in a sense, he's not taking his situation and he's communicating towards the people. I didn't know you can't stop us. I'm a threat. I bring some real shit. And they're not locking me down because I'm guilty. They're locking me down because I don't agree with what they have to say. With, and I don't agree with their choices. And that's not the same thing. Anyway, I, my plan, I had to go and break north. Just like Oliver's neck, I had to get out. My boys had to feds and check. They couldn't try nothing. We had to force to instigate a pre, uh, prison riot. This is what it takes for peace. So I just took the peace, black for black, inside to cut the leash. And that's such an interesting point. It's like we don't really want to go down this route. But, yo, effectively, if we got to start a riot, if we have to go to violence, and that is what it will be to get to the point of peace, then we shall do that because it's the only choice that we have. In the situation um freedom to get out the ghetto no sell it six years we got we got out to put their head out and i'll give them a chance because i'm civilized as for the rest they can't realize and that's real interesting because he doesn't take the opportunity to kill these people he lets them go because at the end of the day he is making his point he is starting the situation but he's not like the people who persecuted him he's better than them and that's so that's amazing you know like when you really think about it and then he's like time to break as the time grows intense i got to steal in my hand right now and i'm looking for defense and i feel like we're supposed to take um the steel as a double entendre for the gun and the mic and the power of the voice as a mic so effectively all of that like i think that's like the core double entendre mm -hmm. then there's one more verse and so him and 52 of his bruised battered and scarred but hard brothers is heading out with a bang ready to bang out but power from the sky from the tower shots rang out because that's true right they do have those towers with dudes with guns uh, yep. blasting down uh figure i trigger my steel stand and hold my post this is what i mean an anti machine if i come out alive and they won't come clean then i threw up my steel bullets flew up and to my surprise the water tower blew up um basically somebody shot a bazooka and it turned out the s1w's broke through took out the situation saved them and made a getaway mm -hmm. and uh the giant broke from the black smoke when they saw it was rougher than the average bluffer because the steel was black the attitude exact and the chase is on telling you to come on 53 brothers on the run and we gone so i feel like we're, we're left with this this like sense of through black unity and black strength purity being like good right in the sense like not being like the devils we are able to use our discipline and our maybe our militant attitude to and i say our because it's just simpler but not I'm, i know i'm not black uh to like unify and create the powerful message that actually can't be stopped because when they try to stop one force there's another one ready to come and if we come together it can create that unity to build it out and make it dope so i think the song is super strong on a sense of that and then simultaneously it's banging so it has the great message like Bayheads one did but i also love the music so i'm giving this one a five on five wow. it's just incredible to me i you spoke on this track we've I already sure given did. you your opinions we've yep. done that part are uh -huh. you sure i don't want to keep doing that the red 100 with three flames security of the first world i like the placement of this a lot um it's an instrumental That's percussion cool. driven so if you think about what's happened it almost feels like there's steel involved just because it's so percussion -y. like there's almost a militant edge to it Ooh, it would have so been think, cool if there was like a steel drum but it, wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been the same because that percussionist kind of feels like it feels like you've broken out y'all are right it's like when, i don't know if you know like how like the che Guevara story and then how him and like pa or not pablo whoever the fuck it was uh fidel with their group on the landed and took over the country and shit and it just kind of has that sense of like in the beginning when they're on their momentous rise as they're going through the jungles and that's what i feel like they're the security of the first world which i believe is what the s1w stands for and that is professor griff's gr group so it's also right. cool i can also see how this would be when they would now walk out and do some choreographed marching shit while uh chuck and flava had a little glass of water backstage and i literally mean water because i don't know how to fuck people drink beer when they're performing that shit dehydrates and i, I can chug like two liters of water in an hour is all i'm saying she's yeah. like i've seen it <laughs> 
Uh, so I think it's it's solid jam. It is weird, harsh end, but like seriously great to listen to. Seriously cool. And again, it's mostly the placement. It serves as a cool palette that like they broke him out of jail. And then you can picture almost the live show, how I could see how they would cinematically make this a whole thing, how the two tracks would flow together and everything. Right. Real awesome. I gave it a 4.25. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just instru- instrumental. It's a minute 21. Um, I don't know. I just didn't find this beat as fun to listen to as the others. So I felt like it was more of like a basic beat. Like it wasn't anything like outstanding, but it was nice. It was fine. Uh, so I gave it a four on five. All right. Are you ready to move on to Rebel Without a Pause? Mm-hmm. I sure am. This is our first podcast this year where it's like 30 degree temperature and the humidity. So if I've been a little irritable, I'm blaming the heat on this one. Um, what do you think of this track? Um, I don't know. I'm not really sure like how I feel about the beat. Um, I feel like it's unique and it, it is hip hoppy, but it is also like listening to a kettle boil. Yeah, it's a so weird beat. it's kind of annoyingly high pitched and over and over and over again. So that's all I have to say about the beat. Maybe not my favorite. Um, I liked some of the, the lines. Um, I like in verse three when Chuck D and, uh, Flava Flav, um, and it's written Flavor Flav. I just want to say that. It says say that on that. Genius. That yeah, doesn't know, make it right. I know. I'm just I've saying. Written I'm just I've written Genius pages. I'm just I've written Genius pages. They're not always right. I know. Um, because as previously mentioned, I am right. Um, so, <laughs> so from a rebel, it's finally on black vinyl, soul, rock, and roll coming like a rhino. Tables turn, suckers burn to learn. They can't disable the power of my label. Def Jam tells you who I am. The enemy's public. They really give a damn. So I thought that that like those lines were really great. I thought that it was, you know, it sounds pretty cool. Um, and like they're just talking about like, you know, who represents them and what represents their label i guess um so like the i don't know i like the rapping um it's good and like i said i just find the beat too much um it's kind of hypnotic at the same time though a little bit it, you kind of get sucked into it and even like a, you're an uncomfortable way so um i like the way that they shout out terminator x um i feel like i appreciate dj so much more now and it's good to like know their names um along with the rest of the group like i feel like you know maybe we don't always learn you know we learn like the front singers uh and or rappers or whatever or like the the people that you know you want to know or the hottest one in the group but you may not know the dj and i think that you know or i maybe i didn't i don't know and i just think that it's cool that like you know i know who some djs are now um like classic ones so it's all right um i gave it a 4.215 um i like it i feel like it's a strong song i mean according to hank shockley it's like the most important record ever and rick rubin feels similarly and like it feels like this is like their biggest shit is what i've seen but i'm not a huge fan of the shrill shrieking sound but then again if you think about bring the noise and some of the attitudes of the loud in your face abrupt nature uh, let's call it the punk rock vibe that this album gives off with its in your faceness um i i get it i like it like for that regard and it is really hypnotic and it really is good to listen to but it's the kind of song where it really depends on your speakers because the mm. the shittier your speaker, the worse that shrill sounds. <laughs> and the better your speaker is, the more enveloped in everything else it becomes. Um, it's cool, though. Like, I mean, there, there's a lot of the lyrics I feel like are in the same vein as shit. Like, yes, the rhythm, the rebel, without a pause, I'm lowering my level, the hard rhymer, where you never been, I'm in. You want styling, you know it's time again. So he's here, Rebel Without a Pause, playing up on the James Dean Rebel Without a Cause, but instead pointing on that he's a rebel consistently grinding. And you know what? Unlike Flav of Flav, I can say that all these years later, I mean, 20, 30, what is it, 30 something? I don't know, 20 something years, whatever. My math is bad now. Oh, no, 1988. How old are you? You're right. It is 30, (laughs) 32. Oh, you're right. It's my age. 32 years later. Damn, eh? I am old. Uh, He's still doing it. The same thing. 
in the most respectable kind of way. I mean, I, I mean that with like, wow, that is incredibly inspirational is, is how I see it. So I think that's real cool. Um, but then it's like, uh, you know, so he's a rebel that applies. He does, you know, he's going in with his real shit. Uh, you know, it's time again, D, the enemy telling you to hear it. So that's him, the public enemy, Chuck D, telling you to listen. They praise the music, it's time to play the lyrics. Some say no to the album, the show, Bum Rush, the sound I made a year ago. I guess, you know, I'm just a radical, not on a sabbatical, just to make it critical. And if I understand in that little uh, documentary thing I watched, there was criticism on uh, Yo Bum Rush to show pos uh, because of how long it took to get released and how much the soundscape changed with sampling and everything between the albums being finished and it like actually coming out. So that's super interesting to me. So this was like meant as a lot more modern, a lot more him validating it, but it's also real humble of him to like bring it up like that. But like, I listen, I heard what you say. Anyway, so Flavor Flay is like, Chuck, I don't understand this man. Yo, we got to slow down. We losing him. And then he just gets back into it. And I'm not going to lie. I don't feel like he really slowed down much. I felt like you just kept going, but mm. I get it. I get it. Anyway, radio suckers never play me on the mix. They okay me. And that's interesting. It feels like they talk about me as being good, but they don't play my shit. That's interesting. Yeah. That's how I took from that. I don't actually know. I never thought about that. But I wonder if that happens a lot where people will talk about the work. Like they'll be like, oh, have you heard of blah, blah, blah? Or, or like six, nine's new track, blah, blah, blah. But they'll or like never they'll, play it or something. Or, they'll talk. Like, I mean, let's let's do it. Rapper six, nine donated a whole lot of drinks to charity. That might have been a news story before his jail shit. Didn't really want to play his music, though. Yeah. Anyway, and I'm not, again, I'm not even trying to put them in the same ballpark. I am fully aware of all the... <laughs> snitch nineness that is involved with that man oh yeah and snitches him. get bitches <laughs> look i understand how <laughs> fake that guy is to the authenticity that is chuck that wasn't the point i was trying to make um anyway i feel like he goes through though and he kind of again attacks it, it's, it is very seminal it really a play it touches on everything that we've really talked about in this review yeah. the media attacks and vilifies him for the truth of his message his music pretty proper it's well made it's real good loud proud kicking live next poet supreme loop a troop bazooka to scheme respect flavor a rebel in his own mind respect and that was a lyric that got brought up a lot when people would talk about flavor Flav in the interviews i've seen supporter of my rhyme and when you look at that what it's really saying is i got flavors back because he supported me the whole way through so how could i turn my back on him yep. you may judge this man but i see him as a rebel to his own way and if you think about it in a macro flavor Flav absolutely disrupts the status quo as much as a lot of other rebels and that's true he might be a capitalist but i don't really think he loves the system he just exploits the system to his gain those aren't the same thing and then I love the Terminator X chorus part where you hear the scratching and shit. Mm -hmm. uh, then you got another big old verse, you know, from a rebel, it's final and black final. Soul rock and roll coming like a rhino. Tables turn, suckers burn to learn. They can disable the power of my label. Def Jam tells you I am. You said that part there. Mm -hmm. But you get the sense that it's like both literally, we create this music, this product, this, the impact of it, and that's what we're doing. And then really runs it through. Um, I do like when he goes, you want to be an S1. Griff will tell you when, and then you'll come again. You'll know what time it is. Impeach the president. Pulling up. I like that. Impeach the president. Impeachment is virtually useless now that I've like learned a little bit about American politics. Um, it would only be really useful if both the Senate and the House were the same thing, uh, same party, and that party was opposite the president. So, I mean, it's not going to happen. Um, I mean, it's really not uh so anyway that's interesting but i like the part because like griff did run the s1s and it was all eating healthies and took care of their bodies and did military yep. drills and all this other shit and then anyway zap the next one i could be your shogun and that's cool because shogun's boss dog samurai so it's real smart how he's kind of being that leader person it really does flow through i don't know if there's like a thousand other bars that thought were super dope but like it's just cool how he has that unity no matter what the game we're all the same pieces in one big chess game yeah the voice of power in the house go take a shower boy pe get it because in public enemy physical mm -hmm, education mm -hmm, showers mm -hmm. a group a crew not singular and that's cool too yeah because i like that that they're like a unified force because the biggest lie hip-hop ever told you is i'm a self-made man 
because you didn't make it on your own. Even Russ, Russ made it with the love and support of all of his fans. That is not on his own. He had people along the way. Did he ever feature with anyone? Well, then he certainly had help. My whole point is it's a fucking lie when any human says they did anything like to the grander of life on their own because the second you get above a certain tier in life, you That's realize, your hermit. But then you're not in the music industry. You you're could probably. Be. Okay, fine, whatever, Bonnie. Um, <laughs> and at the end of the day, those people who say they do it on their own, it's literally the biggest lie ever. And I honestly lose respect for individuals in this game that say they do it on their own. To me, it's a big tell that you're full of shit or that you're, you're, or you're a narcissistic egotist. That's what it means. It's one yeah. of those two things. So either you lack humility and I don't want to talk to you or you don't understand how life works and I don't want to talk to you or you don't understand English, which makes you a silly rapper. Uh, anyway, there's one more verse that comes through. Add to when I'm on fire, juice on the loose electric wire, simple and plain, give me the lane. I'll throw it down in your throat like Barkley. You see my cars, I never get these, etc. It's fine. I don't have a lot more to comment on it. I think it really is a strong, powerful track. And I guess the more I think about it, having gone through the review, I see why it could be such a landmark all that all in one kind of track for them but i feel like coming out of all these years later there's just it just feels like so many of them could be it so maybe it had to do with when it got released and all this other shit right because like singles versus album etc i like it it's a long track it's charged though and i give it a 4.35 on five cool well Let's talk about something that will end up being the name of a short-lived group, a super group. The Prophets of Rage. What happens when a couple of the boys of Rage Against the Machine team up with Chuck T and Be Real? Why? You get Prophets of Rage. I'm assuming this is where they got the name of their super group. However, it is such an amazing title. Like it really is. If you like look at it, they're the prophets of rage. They are here to bring the message of what rage brings to the situation. How to unify the anger of a collective people into a weaponized movement. Yeah. Not again in a negative sense, but in a necessary sense to achieve greater speech. It's almost religious in the message they bring and the way they live and everything. It's so cool. What do you think about this track before I talk too much? Um, you know, the, you know, they uh, it's kind of what it is, right? So they are um, angry. They want you to listen to their words, um, you know, but they are, they're trying to teach you with their words. They're trying to teach you to use your anger in a positive way. Um, and they're angry because of the oppression that they face. And they're less um, like in your face about everything, but it's still there. Um, and like I find that this that like their song topics like don't have like a lot of variety necessarily, but like I like that they're consistent in terms of like what they're talking about and like I don't know like I kind of would like to have a little bit more, but I'm also appreciative of like what they give me in terms of like kind of staying in their not in their box, but like you know. They're focusing on on their message. I guess that's what it is. Um, and, like, you can't keep them caged up. And, like, they're just kind of, like, out there. And, I mean, it's cool. I mean, it's another nice one. Um, I gave this one a 4.3 on 5. Fair enough. I like this one. I think it's kind of, like, there is a part of me that's, like, we're at the end of the album. And while this is a super impressive sonic experience of lots of different sounds stylistically it's really similar so soundscape wise it's really vast but it's also mm -hmm. not that different when you boil it down which i think is really amazing like it yeah i feel like i had the same issue like in terms of finding that balance with this one like it's so all over in terms of what they chose to sample but you can clearly tell it's the same dudes in every track kind of thing i guess that's another way to put it mm -hmm. anyway i mean i don't know what else to really add to the table in this i mean from chuck d's point of view with vice i hold the mic device with force i keep it away of course i mean it's just beautiful to listen at with vice i hold the mic device with ah I just feel it in my soul. Like it's, it's the way he delivers it is so... Okay, I found stuff to say. The way he delivers it is just dope, man. Like, that guy could do this a cappella. He's one of the guys who a cappella, you don't need a beat. You just feel the beat through his voice. That's what Scarface, I think, was talking about. And he's keeping you from sleeping. I'm on a stage, I rage, and I'm rolling. And to the poor, I pour, out, um, pour in on men, on in metaphors. Not bluffing. It's nothing that we ain't did before. We play it. You stay the points made. You consider it dumb by the prophets of rage. It's just great, man. They, they, we go on stage, we rap out the truth, we bring it down, we tell you what's up, 
I rage, I rant at y'all, fuck this shit, and that's what we are. Power of the go. people say. Oh, it's fucking beautiful, man. It's just got this energy. Then, you know, yo, Griff, you and the S1Ws get to the east side. We got to go kick it to the east side, G. And guess what? That little notion, Flavor Flav tells Griff to go all over in this track. And you just, it's interesting, right? Because I think it's like an inclusivity to it. Like, we're everywhere. We got this. We're, we're, we're taking care of every part of this shit. It's not just one place, you know? Mm-hmm. Anyway. I don't have a lot more to comment on the verses. It's good, like, right? Um, I do enjoy the fact that he literally says wiggle. And wiggle is a word said from Chuck D that is fun. I, I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> yeah, I agree. But in general, the song is just beautiful. It's really strong. Um, I really feel like it's cool. He also drops Garby's name again. It's again, giving you something to check out and learn more about. Um, overall, it's really good. I don't know if there's anything else. I know there's still the fourth verse. I'm scanning quick, quick, just to let you know after stuff. Like, you back uh, you back the track, you find where the quotable. I would agree. Um, definitely lots of quotables. Um a lot of quotables that sound similar across tracks, but that doesn't take away from the quotableness of it. It's really strong music. You emulate brothers and sisters. That's beautiful. Yo, that's a quotable, man. That's like, yo, you hearing our message and saying it back. We see the beauty and the connection we created. Damn, that's dope. Follow a path of positivity you go. Some sing it or rap it or harmonize it through a go-go. A little you know, but very seldom I do party jams. About a plan, I'm considered the man. I'm the recordable. God made it affordable. I say it, you play it back in your car, even portable. And it's all cool. He's just kind of describing what he's doing with it. I love the way he rhymes. I love the way he words it. I love the way he times it. And I think it's real strong. Um, I gave it a 4.35. And I, I think part of it is a little burnout on the album at this point rather than its quality because i can't really think of a good reason why it's not more but it's a 4.35 so that's what it is okay anyway are you willing to party for your right to fight absolutely i think it's nuts that they just do the whole song together pretty much word for word right like isn't that kind of nuts and like the whole way through you just you hear their two super contrasting yep. voices to absolutely great effect like power and equality and we're out together and i know some of you and you just hear both of them and it's real fucking dope mm-hmm. i really love that i kind of wish there was more of that on this project That's but true. If, this this beat is banging yo this is one of those ones where it's like you just, just want to <laughs> fucking start moving start dancing to it and i love that because you can clearly see that the point is party for your fight to right instead of just you know maybe using violence or whatever it means we can use the music and the dancing to create the social movement to create our fight to right and i'm like yeah this is real cool plus it's playing up on that beastie boys parody track fight yeah. for your right to party which was a parody track even though people didn't know that and i guess they're on the same label so they might they probably knew each other is all i'm trying to say yeah. What do you think about this one? Yeah, I mean, I definitely can see the uh, the influence of the Beastie Boys on this one. Um, I don't know. Some of the lines were interesting, like the inverse one, power and equality, and we're out to get it. I know some of you ain't with it. This party started right in 66 with a, pl- a pro-black radical mix. Then at the tw- hour of 12, some force cut the power and emerged from how it was your so-called government that made this occur like the grafted devils they were so they're you know they're kind of saying like this issue you know it it stemmed from us standing up and fighting against the man and then they've kind of put like the their fist down and you know kind of or or their i don't know what the expression is like the you know holding you know the black community under their thumbs or whatever uh something like that and like it's you know saying like it's because of you know i mean i don't know what exactly it is that they're saying i mean i I know what it is that they're saying but like um you know i think they're just wanting to protest and try to stop the government from enforcing the government did a lot of bad things yeah i i I mean there's so much that's bad and um i don't know it's it's interesting and like just sort of like black people need to know who they are and um it's you know again similar sort of topic to stand up for yourself and um you know know yourself and know your people um it's also nicely mixed and there's like a lot going on 
in the sound, so I thought that was well done. Um, and then people just try and lie about how powerful the black man is, and you know the media is spreading like a false message um, about the you know black people, black men maybe in particular, um, and like they're you know the gang members and you know all these these stupid things that you know everybody was saying. You know all these black people they're all just bad, 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 and it's just like nonsense. And so it just kind of saying like this. I don't. I don't. I don't know. It's Again, uh, same sort of issues, unfortunately. And, um, I mean, the topic is very good. Uh, you know, exactly what we've kind of come to expect in terms of, like, the sound and the quality and the message and all of that. And I really like what Terminator X did on this one. I really like him. Um, I give this one a 4.4 on 5. I feel like I wasn't concise with this one. <laughs> I feel like it's just a strong protest track, right? Mm-hmm. Like, this is basically, like... I could just picture people with like signs and shit going through it. Yeah. First verse is kind of looking at like, yo, we're here to fight. And some of y'all ain't with it, but check it, man. The government's a bunch of devils. They made this happen. Yeah. Fair enough. I'm not really a big fan of the government. I'm yeah. not going to lie. I'm not, um, I'm more of a libertarian than not. Uh, J. Edgar Hoover, and he could have proved it to you. He had the king and X set up. Yo, J. Edgar Hoover is a fucking asshole. If you really look at all the scummy shit that guy did. Mm hmm. All sorts of shit. But yeah, there was a lot of during his FBI run assassinations of black civil leaders. Yep. Just that's what they did. Whatever. Facts of history that people don't like as much today. Also the party with Newton Cleaver and Seal. And it's cool because he's giving you again more names to give you the context to go look into these people and to learn that shit. Mm-hmm. Uh ends the verse with word from the honorable Elijah Muhammad, know who you are to be black. And so kind of tapping into what he preaches, uh, which would be, you know, the Nation of Islam doctrines. And that makes a lot of sense because when you look at what they're saying there, it is really about unity. It's about understanding your history of who you are, understanding what a black Asiatic man is, an original black Asiatic man. You know, understanding that that is where Earth originates from Africa, all of it, you know. And so it's important to just kind of know your history because if you knew that, well, then maybe all the honkies that is up in charge are lying when they talk their superiority bullshit. And some devils prevent this from being known because if you check the history books, they aren't. And again, well, I just like to bring this up because it's like modern history and where I come from in Quebec. But And I they, think minorities never get much you know, spotlight in so, history so like, in, or school spotlight. In, in 2018, I believe it is, the Quebec government releases a new history book that women don't get brought up. Like, you're going to tell me in all of Quebec's history, there's no women that did anything? There's no black people in Quebec, according to that book. Shit, the natives were super friendly. They're like, come on in. Let's just uh, give you some land. And it's like, that's not what we did. Did you know that we systematically murdered Huskies so that we could keep the savage Nunavut natives up north in Quebec? We almost eliminated a breed of dog. Just to stop them from traveling. A combined effort of the Canadian government with the provincial Quebec police force. Um, that's not in the history books, but they're also definitely not going to mention. You know how many places in Quebec still have the N-word in it? Like N-word river? Like, I mean, it's in French, but it is what it is if you translate the title. Right. I can't, like, I'm not going to say the word. Y'all know what it is. But, like, factually speaking, these are real places in Quebec that they don't want to change. They're like, no, it's history or whatever the fucking reason they have for it. But it's kind of whack to me. Anyway, that's just what it is. But then I wonder, like, do you change history because of that? Or do you, you leave it names. as a reminder? I don't know. I, no, you change the names and you take down the statues of like Confederate I leaders and you do not leave up the worship. It's You want you want to take those things mm-hmm. and put them in an archive. Show, yeah, because you, you want to show that take this Take the statues and put them in the look at the racist museum kind of thing, right? <laughs> I'm not kidding, though. You take it and then, but then it's complicated because then you're narrating history, too. But then However, you're promote, almost promoting racism in a sense if you're making mo- money off of Those like, people had power. Racist. You can't be racist unless you have power. So, like, that is how I understand it. Like, there's a power dynamic to racism where the minority group just doesn't have the power to be the racist majority. Right. And that would be the... Di- now, you can say bigotry and all the other ones, prejudice, but I believe racism has a power element. 
to it mm -hmm. that makes it what it is. Yeah. Um, so yeah. The you know us versus them. But it's more it's more like look black people in America in the way I understand the word aren't racist even if they're bigots even if they're prejudiced assholes even if they fucking loathe honkies even if they loathe them and want them to die and they just hate all white people because in America the power dynamic does not put black people in the advantage that makes them not racist or therefore cannot be and it's a misunderstanding of the term racism again this is how I understand it so on all of this my understanding well, of the word could be wrong well that's interesting to think about but why would there be racism, bigotry? At all? Why is everything so specific? Well, racism had to do with racial subjugation of, inf of not inferior, but like less fortunate groups that were taken. And so the reason the majority gets to be racist is because we can villainize the small group of people due to the powerful position put out. However, if a role reversal happens and in a thousand years all the white people's the minority, then you could make the statement only in that circumstance that maybe white people can't be racist. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> we'd probably yeah. still full. We'd, we'd probably fucking find a way to redefine the rules. And I'm not like against white people and shit. Well, but I think it is I also think it history. Is worth and... pointing out that most of the white people I know are accidental racist all the fucking time and don't like it when I point out how bad their jokes are. Mm -hmm. Or how awful it is when they make jokes and throw on their movies and I go, are you really promoting this? Blah, 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 blah. And I don't get treated very positive. People don't invite me to things anymore. <laughs> I'm not that popular like that. People love like, they, people treat me like a YouTube video. Go figure. Yeah. I mean, in my real life, we, we talk and like, that. then they go, okay, that was fun. Let's go make Let's our racist jokes now. over there. You know, or you look at memes and I'm like, those are all mean. Why can't we empower each other with positive words and shit? And they're like, who the fuck are you? Get out. So I don't, but uh, that, that's just where I'm at with life. I'm, uh, I've also been studying hip hop for a while. It's fucked me up a little bit in a good way, I think. I get this track of 4.5. It's banging, man. Yeah, yep. it's just solid energy. I get an album too, if we go mark right there, to a 4.509. Why? This shit's a timeless classic. I mean, A, it sounds good today. Why? Because. I just think the way they sampled everything was just done in a way where while in some ways it's absolutely dated because it really does sound like it was made when it was made the content is from a point where it still applies to today i mean even if it's not soap operas reality televisions you know i'm just saying or all the other things that kind of come with the soundscape they just put this shit together with such perfect musicology that it really works and it doesn't come off like a goofy 1980s album that's just like that's why we don't do a lot of 80s shit. I'm not going to like I most like of it. I like them. I like them. I think I'm they're not, fun. I, that's why we're not doing it. Is she might like them, but I found myself not enjoying those albums as much. So we well, haven't done a lot before 1990 in a while, to be honest with you. And if there are some stellar albums, for sure, we'll do them. Like, I really enjoyed them. Uh, like the Ice T album that we did. Uh, I, I really enjoyed some of the other stuff we've covered. Like, come on, Straight Outta Compton's a good album. You know how little I listen to the tracks on them? Every time the Ice T tracks come on, I skip them because I'm just never in the mood for that. So it's like, it's just not a vibe I feel. But from like the scholar of hip hop point of view, this this is so cool. However, sorry, that's in general for the 80s. This album, this Public Enemy shit, really worked today. I found myself vibing to a lot of these tracks mm -hmm. in a way where I get why they can go to Europe and sell out proper and why North America sucks because we don't care about anything other than last year's charts. But I can see how they're timeless in their ability to recapture moments and make some great jams that really can be played anywhere in the world and just connect with people. And that's fresh as fuck. And the message is great too. And everything is dope. And Chuck D is fun. And Flava Flav adds such flavor that it's dope. <laughs> yeah, boy. Um, yeah, I mean, I really like this one. Um, I gave it a 4.35 on 5, so an 87%. So I would definitely say that this is a classic. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, I mean, they're all, I think, they're all, I give grades of all over 4, uh, 4 or higher. So they're all pretty good songs. Um, I'm just trying to scan through, but I think I did. Um, yeah, I mean, so they're all quality music. They're all, and like the message is, you know, it is what it is and it's you know powered you know it, it powers through and i definitely like the mixing i like the beats um i mean i think it's really cool i uh, i like it 
Fair enough. So thank y'all for being here with us. Uh, it's super dope to have you on this journey. Those of you that do watch this fire in the video, you the real VIPs. Uh, feel free to leave a comment letting us know what you think about anything. Uh, like the video if you did. And uh, yeah, subscribe. I don't know if I said that. Special thanks to the patrons, Ismail Gadamsi, Chris Prada, Jonathan Barnes, Linda Williams. Scribble and Carl, they're dope, they support what we do, and uh, yeah, they get to tell us what albums they want to see us review, and if you want to join the adventure and help us get to the next level, that would be a super dope thing that you could do to help us. Mm -hmm. I make music like I said at the beginning. You can check all that out. Links in description and all that. It's real fucking hot in here. Yeah. So thank y'all for watching. Live long and prosper. And we will invest in an air conditioner. Peace, guys.